Good morning, Vietnam. It is Friday. This is the island of Tia Mon, uh, the, our visa agent and the people here. Very, very kindly last night gave us the ferry berth. It's actually a very, very nice slip. They didn't charge us for it. And it is, of all the places, I've just entered Therese, of all the places that we've been in Asia, I think Tia Mon so far, thus far, has been my favorite. The people here are all invariably, invariably just so, so kind. It's not forced, not contrived. They don't want anything from us. They are just genuinely interested from, yeah, it's just been a really lovely experience. We should have stayed longer. We should have stayed longer. And we have a boat to catch. We have to get our boat to Europe. And so it is time to move on. Today is theoretically just a day sail. We have 40 nautical miles to do. Teresa is just finishing off her coffee and doing her ablutions. I am, as soon as she's ready and got her shoes on, we will get the lines. Oh, there she is. The Admiral S. Uh, okay, are we ready to go? I checked the weather and it looks like very light wind downwind. So, so we'll see. Master. Yeah, exactly. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Goodbye Tiemann, I'm sad we couldn't have stayed longer. Okay, so main sail is up. We are still in the lee of the land, which essentially means that we're getting no real wind or we're not gonna know our wind for the day. The weather forecast and models suggest that over the next couple of uh, days, we are gonna have very light winds. Thankfully, as you saw, we filled up with diesel. And so we can motor probably, we've got about, I should say about 700 miles to run. And we have probably just about enough to get there, but with lots of places to fill up, if we have to motor all the way. And I don't think we will. Very, very light winds. We've only got two knots. So I'm hoping that once we get out of the lee of Tiamen Island, we'll pick up a little bit more wind. But otherwise we've only got 29 miles to go, which actually is uh, such a short distance compared to all the lengthy passages we've been doing recently. So yeah, should be a nice day on the water either way. What's going on? I don't know, I'm getting tension. Is the furler off? Something's going on. Yeah, okay. Hold on. You ready? Go. doing six knots. There you go. There you go. That's the difference between the jib and the screecher. We're doing six knots now. Can I just, uh, just a little bit of a, yeah. just a debrief on that, right? Yeah. I think it's just a very interesting small case of when you say to me, do you want me to just keep push the button again? Nothing wrong with that as a, as a method of doing things, but we had a, a riding turn in the lazy sheet, which at the point at which it started to jam, I was able to worry it free. If you pulled it tighter, it would have just tightened the lathe that, and we, it would have been far more difficult to worry free. Yeah, I know. Well, I realised that there was a problem, that's why I said no, no, we, I we I need to stop. I know. But I'm just saying to you, it's just from the point of debrief, we had two pathways, push the button and see if we can unlock it, or leave it and see if we can... Yeah, well, and, and sometimes you, like, 
of sheep food. Yeah, like, but, like Robert, when he kind of like put the boat into a sheep no, food. No, no, but sometimes when like there's just something that, like for example, the reefing lines when you're raising yeah, the main, like they're they you can only get them running by pushing the button for the halyard because you know exactly. there's some tension on them. Now I need to go and get that travel back. I think I think also that is a very good example of when you can hit, when you can hear that there's something wrong you stop and you investigate rather than just cracking on like inside of my head yeah yeah exactly five and a half five and a half knots and uh why don't we have a uh, apparent wind angle there we go uh 112 degrees and apparent wind speed of nine and yeah we're doing five and a half might be able to get some improvement on that. There's definitely some wind over there. There's white caps. That's not 10 knots of wind. Okay, we are sailing. Let's go take a look. We've got nine knots of wind at 127. Might need to adjust that mainsail a little bit. We're doing four and a half knots. Okay, let me try trimming the sails a little bit more first. Okay, we've only got like eight knots of wind. So yeah, not exactly speeding along, but that being said, we're not really in a rush today. We've only got about 18 more miles to go. So all good. So normally editing while I'm underway is um, a bit of a no-go, partly because I can't really hear anything and also because you need like very fine kind of sensitive motor skills to do some elements of the editing and when the boat is moving you're like fingers are not quite as uh, reliable as they normally are. But mainly because it makes me feel quite seasick if I'm editing footage of us sailing while sailing it's like my body can't work out the difference between what I'm looking at and what I'm feeling but it's such a calm day um, and I'm very late with this episode it's a Friday and this is due to go out to the public on Monday and our patrons are supposed to get early access and they almost always do but sometimes yeah when you're like basically on a delivery trip yeah, as I said, it's hard to sail and edit at the same time. So I'm running behind this week. Got the nice big screecher out. So yeah, good day for it. Perfect day. I think we're having burgers for lunch. Nick's making burgers. That's exciting. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful sail today. Really, really nice. We do have the engines on, which you can probably hear in the background because yeah, it didn't have quite enough wind to fully sail. Um, so now we've got full tanks again, that's fine. So we should be getting in in about an hour and a half. But in the meantime, burgers for lunch. Toasted brioche, wagyu beef burger, a la ruby rose. Oh, this makes me very happy indeed. Where are my sunglasses? Ah, oh, yes. God, this is pleasant. I know that I'm always very excited when I've got food in my hands, but I just feel like this is like, the ultimate sailing experience, just sunshine, following seas, beautiful islands, and I get a burger. That's good. Very happy girl right now. And I've got some clean underpants. I know, you're such a little housewife today. I feel like I'm just forever like coming onto the foredeck and talking about how bloody nice it is up here, but you know, it's just so it's just so incredibly comfortable and it's just so pleasant today. I mean the conditions are just absolutely stunning, like couldn't ask for anything more. And we're surrounded by these islands which just look so beautiful and we're sailing off the coast of Malaysia of all places somewhere I never ever thought that I would be spending any real time and we've got the street throughout and the sun is shining you can probably see behind me that's the island that we're heading for so we're only about eight miles away from it now I have to say now that we are knock on wood 
hopefully kind of getting the hang of this boat, things are getting so much easier and uh, we can just enjoy the ease of sailing a catamaran like this, you know, just everything when it's not difficult, everything is easy and very comfortable. So Nick just went up onto the coach roof because we heard something like rattle up there and we're like, oh, okay. Anyway, we can't find the source of the noise, but Nick was like, come and check this out. And just as a bit of background, we've literally been finding straw like all over the place, which has been a bit of a mystery. Anyway, mystery sold because this was in our, our sail bag. I hope there's no little eggs in there that we have to start. Oh, we've stolen someone's home. Not someone's home, a bird's home. Is everything okay in there? As much as it's going to be. Can you see any birdies in here? No, I can just see a lot of feathers yeah, um... and some plastic. Oh shit. What's wrong? I just saw what that pink thing from down there. What was it? Show me. This. Oh. Does it need to be fitted now? Now. Hold that. Right, seriously. Hold Where's it from? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. What happened? Let's wash it. Yeah. Yeah. But hold everything else that comes off that you tell me, yeah? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine if that had come out? Oh, shit, we'd have had a job to do. That is meant to be a nylon nut. I'll just say, thank God it would happen on a calm day where we could actually like hear stuff happen. If it had been like a rough day, we would never have heard that. Found it. No fish, no foul. Why are you so sanguine about this? It's a boat. I'm sanguine about it because we've got all the constituent parts and I can put it back together. Yeah, I know. I'm just I know, freaking no. out about what could have happened. We've arrived after a very enjoyable sail. Really beautiful day. We are just about to round the uh, tip of this island called Cebu and then we'll find somewhere to anchor out of hopefully the wind and the swell and then we'll just settle in for hopefully a quiet afternoon and evening on board yeah right. have you had a good day it's been pleasant yeah thus far like honestly it's uh it's kind of the sea state is nice and it, i think this is the first day actually since that i can remember where i actually treated the boat while we're at sail, exactly the same way as I would at anchor or yeah. uh, uh, in port. Very comfortable, isn't it? It's very comfortable. Like we've literally, you know, done the washing, cooked a meal. Like it's just, yeah, it, and and it is like insanely pleasant. And that's enough time to kind of like throw any landlubber cob legs, landlubber codwebs. Cobwebs. Oh, me ragged. Landlubber cobwebs out. You know, to get your sea legs. Yeah. This is just, it's just bloody pleasant. It's just pleasant. Just pleasantries. That's what we like, isn't it? We do like pleasant. We love pleasant. And when I want to turn the boat to wind, 50 degrees, and then there's a blue patch about 100 meters off. If I were you, I would just nudge in very, very slowly using the sonar and just see what the depth does. A huge turtle literally just poked his head out and looked at me. It was like five meters away. <laughs> very cool. Yep, chain's just straight out in front, coming up out of the water. Yes, Nick's going to attempt to dive on the anchor. As the bridle was coming up, it was doing a weird, like, bouncy thing, so... But we weren't going anywhere, like, took a transit, we were completely stationary, so couldn't quite work it out. Could be that there's some grassy patches. I've seen quite a few turtles poke their heads out, so it might be that we're on, like, a grassy, grassy patch. Nope, Nick just yelled at me saying that it's not set. I'm going to start the engine and reverse a little bit. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, the end of the day. How are you going, Nick? Yep, yeah, well, I have to... Well, it's six o'clock, we're going to have a beer. The only thing I have to do is check the ice machine later and if it's um, still up the fritz, I'll have to just take it apart again and close the solenoid off. So you've you've been working on it this afternoon? Yeah. So basically the ice machine feed, the water feed in, seems to have less crap in it. Okay. So I'm hoping that now, now that it's all been bled out, 
the solenoid will close. It, there is a chance, and this is a real chance, that there's actually something caught in the solenoid, and that's why it just won't close, and I won't be able to get it out. In that case, there's nothing I can do, it'll just keep dripping. So what I will do is I'll take the solenoid apart, take it apart, keep blowing it out, and I'll do this like half a dozen times over the course of the next week. It, I mean, I can strip this thing down now in 10 minutes. It's literally, I've taken the back, the stainless steel back off the freezer, so, you know, take the solenoid out, connect it to the, the dinghy battery, click, blow, put it back together. If it doesn't work, we need a new solenoid. All right, well, for now. Now, nuts and beer. <laughs> beer and nuts, nuts and beer, eh? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, well done you. Oh, what a day. What a day, eh? Well, good, nice day sailing, actually. It was a nice day sailing. It was a very chill day and a very easy day. There's something about cold beer that just beats all other drinks for just for slaking thirst, I right? I know, I know. I mean, I, I think people who don't drink beer, I admire you a lot, but I also just don't think that I could give it up. I mean, look. I just I, love a cold beer at the end of the day. All I would say to you is lager is a shitty drink. I don't like lager. Like, no, no, cold lager is very refreshing, but yeah. I couldn't go on the press on lager. No, but I, I just can't. one. No, one or six, that's fine. Like a cold beer after a day's work or a day's sailing. Can't be beaten. No, it can't. All right, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed coming sailing with us today. And if you want to come sailing with us again next week and the week after and the week after and the week after, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next week with more sailing. More sailing in Malaysia. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.